Hey gang, Jack Allaire here, and today we're going to review a game that was released on the Sega Dreamcast back in 1999. It was developed by Toka, a French video game company, and there were plans to release this on GameCube as well, but that version never arrived. We're looking at Soul Fighter. Our story starts with the king telling us the tale of how we ended up in this predicament. It all began when my eldest son fell tragically. He goes on for about three minutes, and we get some very interesting camera angles during that time, such as to my downfall, which all that took place was revealed. All were shocked by the speed. Once that's over with, we get to commence the beating up of bad things. First, we need to select our characters. We get to choose between Altus, the warrior, Orion, the wizard and Siami, a spy that was introduced in the beginning of the story. Once you actually select a character, they do this. Every level begins with an awkward cutscene where you run in and the announcer lets you know that it's time to fight. The combat is fairly simple. You press X to punch or swing your weapon, Y to kick, A to block, B to jump. Uh, you can jump punch and jump kick by combining the jump and attack buttons. You can also use the D-pad to strike out in a reverse punch or kick by pressing the correct button. The other commands get a little weird. To take out your weapon, you press the up on the D-pad and press A. And if you press down an A, you pick up an item if it's highlighted in green on the ground. Got it? Good. These items will give additional weapons, refill health, and scrolls to aid in teaching you how to play the game. You never have to worry about getting lost in this game because the all-knowing hand will guide you to where you need to go to pause in the action for even a moment without an enemy on screen. You kill things until you've collected all the souls in that area, within the time limit, and then move on to the boss. The bosses seem to be challenging because of the camera more than anything else. You spend a great deal of time trying to position for a good shot while trying to avoid being pounded in the ground, all the time not actually being able to see said boss. The story moves along at a good pace, and the game introduces new enemies with each level, and the games take place in towns and tunnels, in daytime and night, and the look of the levels does feel as if it was created with a sense of scale in mind. The towns look big, the tunnels look small. You get the idea. A very strange thing that happens in some cutscenes is that all three characters show up at once. I can only imagine that the game was being thought of as a multiplayer game, like Gauntlet Dark Legacy, but it just never got to that point, which is kind of sad because co-op would have made this game even better. The controls may be a little clunky and the graphics don't hold up as well as some of the other Dreamcast games, but I still think it's worth a try. So go pick your own copy up and as always, play on!